It's been a long minute, almost a year, probably over a year since I posted a good random thoughts video. If you're here because you want to know about the new bike, I mean, we may bring it up, but it's still in break-in period. You don't have enough miles on it. I got to get the 600 miles on it. So I'm having to take it easy on it. I already know a few things that I don't like, but that'll be in a review video or some kind of introduction to the 890 Duke R. It's an amazing machine. I've wanted one for a couple of years and uh, I bought one. But that's not what this video is about. I'm not quite sure, just like most of my videos, I'm not quite sure what they're about, but there was a topic, you know, I wanted to uh, cover. It was kind of bouncing on right head, and well, nothing fucking do. That's all, that's all I ever do is sit around and think of shit. Uh, try to solve the world's, well, try to solve my problems and is I dwell on shit until I get some sort of revolu rev revolution, resolution. But I thought I'd give a little bit of an update on where I'm at. Sold our house eight, nine months ago. And immediately after that, after that separated, we went our separate ways. So I have officially been single for, I guess, eight months. No relationship whatsoever. I have been in seclusion, but there's a good quote. I wish I knew who said it, but it said, it's in the darkness that you will find your light. And my darkness is probably way different than everybody else's because I'm trying to build a business. As an entrepreneur, and I, you know, and I, I didn't even know I was an entrepreneur most of my life. I mean, that's just what people called us because we had businesses. But plenty of people have a business and are not an entrepreneur. Um, I've learned that it's an unusual person uh, <laughs> that enjoys misery. I think, on some level, the anxiety that comes with saying, oh shit, I think this is how an entrepreneur thinks, and this was not what I was planning on talking about. Someone sees a problem, or I see a problem, most people bitch about the problem. They complain, they say, well that's dumb, and that's their solution. <laughs> an entrepreneur is more of an engineer, an engineer to social issues as much as literally structural issues. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's no limit to, to the entrepreneurial spirit. And it's seeing that same problem, but instead of complaining about it, their mind goes somewhere to where it can't shut off, I think. And you gnaw on it, I guess you could say. You, you think about it. You dwell on it. Especially if you instinctively think, ooh, I think I have a solution. But then you stay with that thought and you work it out and you, you're looking for every pitfall and Ultimately, that's I, I seen a quote that said entrepreneurship is jumping off of a cliff and building a plane on the way down. I don't know of a better way to describe it. And it's having that instinct that, ah, fuck it, we'll figure it out. And I do love that about me. I could not imagine being any, any other way. But it does come with a lot of darkness. Not negativity, but uh, just general anxiety. And I guess that's why I'm back to making videos again because I've been doing a ton of meditation and it's honestly got me through it. Once I figured out that meditation was just simply sitting there um, and breathing, that's a form of meditation. I've gotten really good at that, not turning on the television or listening to music, although I will do those things after I feel that I am at peace. When I feel I am at peace here in my chest, in my heart, in my stomach more importantly, when I have high levels of cortisol in my gut, that's when I don't allow myself to be distracted by people, or I try not to. How about that? Sometimes it's overwhelming and I just gotta get away from it, but um, what I, the reason why I bring up anxiety, because a lot of it's driven by instinct, right? Well, not all of it, all of it. Instinct and circumstances, okay? Instinct and circumstances, and maybe it's the instinct towards those circumstances that trigger that fight or flight mode. Well, I've noticed what happens is, and I think this is a pattern that everybody suffers from, I used to just call it intrusive thoughts, but I've recently learned from a great book called Letting Go, thoughts are not real. Thoughts are a representation of, of a feeling that the ego has generated. You feel a certain way, the ego tries to justify it or, or reason with it, and literally, believe it or not, try to logically process, and this was a hard one for me to wrap my head around, but 
the, your, your mind is trying to logically process why you have a feeling and that comes across as a thought, an image, right? A story. And we all do it. Most people suffer from it to a point that they can't function well in society. They have to take medications to deal with their, their anxiety. But what I've learned is when you catch yourself having these thoughts, attempt to focus on what could possibly be the emotion that is generating the thoughts. Now, if you're not experiencing some kind of feeling, then you're not going to be able to get in touch with it. I, I was trying to like shortchange the process and be like, ooh, I want to deal with a, you know, uh, f some random fear. They're all based in fear of some kind for the most part. Not all emotions, but a lot of them are driven by negative fears. But let's say jealousy may be yours. Or let's say... Hmm, what's another good one? Jealousy is a fucking good one. That's a damn good one. I don't even suffer from jealousy. But could it, maybe it's rejection. That's a really good one. Or maybe it's just feeling hopeless or um, worried about never being accepted. You know, worried about what if you're just worried about being alone for the rest of your life? That's actually the biggest one, right? That's the one. Worried about abandonment. Everyone is worried about being caught in the darkness without someone they can tug on. Those are generally relationships. It's the reason why people do not leave them out of fear of being alone. So what they do is they stay until they're miserable, until one of them ends up cheating. And in some cases, it's a lot worse. In the meantime, they've destroyed generations worth of offspring uh, because they were too scared to leave. They were too scared of the thoughts that may happen. It's the what if they find someone else. The what if uh, I'm alone. The only way you ever take action in those situations is to be forced into it. That's the easiest way. Someone leaves you and then now you find yourself alone. So that's how, that's how we get to that point. Rarely does anyone say, you know what? This doesn't feel good. I've tried and tried and this is something that I just don't feel that I'm qualified nor have the energy to attempt to try again. So I want to wish you the best of luck. I don't want to hold somebody back. It, maybe it's all me. And in that case, shouldn't I have a responsibility to say, hey, something's wrong with me? Maybe I ought to remove myself from this situation because everything I've tried has not made it any better. So instead of having resentment and anger, just step out and say, hey, I want to wish you luck. This is not working. That's the responsible way, I believe. But what comes, the, but what comes with that is the darkness there's a lot of darkness and then you're building business on top of it or whatever maybe you're just working a nine to five doesn't matter you get to deal with your shit everybody gets to it man it is really what makes you better and i just hunkered down i went out and hung out with a few people throughout the last eight months maybe i went wild drank a bunch in the beginning still probably drank too much but i just kind of wanted to be around people and then slowly but surely i started understanding the importance of just being with my thoughts and learning how to not focus on them and instead learning to focus on my breath and then narrowing down from there to what is it I'm feeling what is this the sadness what is generating this and um, that's where the magic happens and in this book letting go this is this is how it works it um dr. David something Sorry, I don't remember his name. But it was relatively simple. I mean, depending on the trauma that you may have had, maybe this is an early childhood trauma, or maybe it's just, hey, you got rejected. Uh, whatever, you got fired. That anxiety that's associated with that. You, instead, you focus on the, the emotion, and by focusing on the emotion, you literally think of the emotion as a file on your desktop. And you focus on that file, call it whatever sadness you can think of. You focus on it to a point that you literally just drag it down to the delete bin and let it go. And that's exactly what happens. All the thoughts that we're making up, well, all the thoughts associated with that emotion literally get deleted, sometimes in minutes. That's actually been my experience, and I think it's because I've always been very good at dealing with my shit. 
when I have an issue with someone, I pretty much deal with it if they're worthy of investing in, in the meaning that, hey, uh, this is a friend, I need to let this person know. I feel some kind of way and I don't, uh, I wanna know where they're coming from and I wanna nip it in the bud, right? I'm really good at that, so I don't have a lot of un, uh, managed baggage and baggage or whatever what was the word i was trying to say i don't have a lot of i don't have any trauma in my life i really focus hard on dealing with it uh but i, I gotta tell you eight months now man i've been going through some shit that's why i bought a fucking another bike i saw i broke my back about seven months ago maybe broke both my arms about eight nine months ago i had one hell of a year I was going through some shit then, and I think I was just distracting myself and going out hard on these bad boys, practicing stunts, shit that, you know, scared the fuck out of me, and uh, just just pushing my limits. I don't think that's bad. I think that's good, but ha, you got to pay the price. But uh, well, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Call it a day. Let this bitch talk for a second. Until